What's up, YouTube, and ho ho ho, it is Christmas time, and I am Domino. Welcome to our Sun and Moon anime review of episode 53. Now, we said this, we had been playing Ultra Sun and Moon for a month, we hadn't watched any of this anime, and this episode gets us back on track, I think. Depending on when this goes up, I'll be all back on. I'm back on track right now, this is the last episode. The last couple episodes have been absolutely wild. They've been my two most favorite episodes so far, and that includes this episode. But definitely go back and check those out if you haven't seen them. Now, if you watched this episode, episode 53, let me know in the comments below what your favorite part of the episode was, and let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, as the episode starts, it's recapping the last episode, which, as I said, was amazing. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. Um, but the episode starts with the gang riding through the ultra wormhole, right? They're trying to save Lusamine's mom. They're trying to get to the other side of the wormhole. And now that Solgaleo has emerged, Liger Zero himself, they're traveling through the wormhole. And they emerge in a world that's Nihilego's world. It looks like Nihilego's world. Um, and Liger Zero just standing there just looks so cool. And multiple Nihilego appear in front of them. That's when the episode intro begins. The episode is called Hurry Up! Operation Save Lusamine. So it starts with Kukui and Burnett at the altar. And Burnett marches a, launches a marker where the ultra hole was so that the gang doesn't get lost when they come back. Team Rocket's unsure about what to do next, but they say maybe they should leave. Beware hugs them as he's been doing to tell them like, no, no, they're going to stay there. I... I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> so in the Ultra World, the group's discussing how to save Lusamine. These Nihilego don't seem threatening. At least they're not threatening from what we see. Um, but Ash tells Sophocles, don't worry, don't be nervous, don't be scared. We've got all of our Pokemon with us. And that's when they all release all of their Pokemon. And this is where we see the, the picture of all of their Pokemon. Solgaleo, Liger Zero standing behind them looking so strong. Um, so, Lusamine Nihilego appears in front of them, and she wants them all to go away. If she wanted them all to go away, why not just run away from them so they didn't know you're there? I don't know. The reason I didn't like this episode so much was because of this Lusamine Nihilego character. Um, but Lusamine seems afraid of something, but this entire episode gave me vibes from the third movie with Entei and the unknown where the crystal towers were appearing and the little spears from the ground because there was all kinds of that there was even the rocks the rock stairs like that Brock went and all of them uh, ran on it was it was very third movie vibe um, but Lucimi wants them to go away saying that she finally gets to meet a, an ultra beast and um, Gladion suggests that, oh yeah, yeah, Gladion tells the group that while she, while she might be getting controlled, half the thoughts are her own because she's always wanted to meet an Ultra Beast. So it comes out and Lily launches the first attack, but a crystal wall appears in front of them. Like I said, definitely third movie. Lusamine then yells that she hates them and the, you know, Lily starts to overreact to that and then remembers, wait, she's being possessed. This isn't actually her thoughts, etc., etc. Um, but none of the Pokemon can get through the wall. That is until Solgaleo comes up. You have Solgaleo here. Why not just use him? But he uses his Sunsteel Strike and blasts straight through the whole thing. <clears throat> um, so Lusamine then starts to throw out her Pokemon. The first one that she throw throws out is Salazzle. Now, just like in the Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon games, these Pokemon are possessed. They're, they, they're possessed by the Ultra Beast, so they have the uh, the totem aura to them. Um, and Kiawe winds up taking on this Salazzle. And my thoughts were like, it was launching Dino Shock. You have Solgaleo right there. He's part steel. Just throw him out. Uh, anyway. Kiawe starts taking on the Salazzle and is actually bodying this Salazzle. So as the rest of the gang travels on, Melodic, Lilligant, and Miss Magius are thrown out next, and who to take them on but Lana, Malo, and Sophocles. I didn't really write too much about this because they were just getting smacked up until Litten and Rowlet came, Ash's Litten and Rowlet came, and, and Ash says, looks back and says, I'm counting on you guys. And that was actually pretty cool, but 
Um, the Lilligant uses Sweet Scent and gets Rallet's attention. It was whatever. But then it goes back to Kiawe fighting Salazzle. And Kiawe tells um, Marowak to use Bone Meringue. And he has Turtonator use freaking Fire Z move. I don't remember the name of it. Um, whatever it is. And just absolutely obliterates the Salazzle. I thought we weren't going to see a Salazzle again. I was going to assume death. But it did show it alive. Um, the next battle that we see is against an Absol. And apparently this was Gladion's Umbreon's. Whoa. Gladion's Umbreon's training partner when they were younger so those two go to fight each other and this absol is given the work i mean throws sil valley to the ground with an ice beam and then used mean look on the other two but mean look in anime does something different because it like paralyzed those two they were like terrified out of their minds which i guess that's what mean look is supposed to be um but then Lily and Ash head off, and the next Pokemon that we see, or I guess the last one that we see, is Clefable. And I was thinking, okay, this would be Clefable versus Ash, because Clefable is like Lusamine's signature Pokemon. But no, Lily says, no, I'm taking this one on. And Clefable and Lily starts to fight, um, as far as like Vulpix and Clefable, but before they can get too far, Lily pulls out her Clefairy doll that she had when she was a kid and starts to approach Clefable. Now, Clefable don't care nothing about this because he's possessed, or she, whatever, is possessed and like goes to attack Lily. And Ash's um, Lycanroc shows up to save the day, blah, blah, blah. But Lily gets right up to Clefable and is telling Clefable, like, remember, like, we used to play, we used to be best friends, etc., etc., and goes to like. Clefable starts to attack. I think it's using Dazzling Gleam, but I thought like Dazzling Gleam hits two opponents. This very clearly is like Clefable's body lights up with fairy energy and then just like slams into something. So I don't know. But um But Lily like calls off Vulpix and Lycanroc who are about to attack and instead hugs Clefable. It was so extra. It was such an extra scene. They had flashbacks of Lily's childhood with Clefable, and it, again, it was just so extra. But it all seemed to have worked. Clefable calmed down and remembered Lily, um, lost its little like possessed look that it had going on. Um, and then the episode ends with Ash charging towards Lusamine, and we hear Ash say like, we're almost there, we'll take care of this, etc., etc. So that was the episode. Again, it was kind of lame. Like, as you can tell, like, I didn't have too much to say. The best part about the episode was definitely Kiawe's moment against Salazzle. But then the preview for the next week, I couldn't tell if it was showing, like, the Pokemon, like, Lusamine's Pokemon getting, like, revived because of the Ultra Beast power. Because it was showing Salazzle fighting Kiawe again. It was showing the other three fighting. Um, but, it, I mean, it was also showing, like, Ash... Solgaleo versus uh, Nihilego and Lusamine. And then at the end of it, it shows Ash go for his new Z move, the 10,000 volt Thunderbolt. That's going to be freaking sweet. And I love the, I love the partnership between Ash and Pikachu where they like, they fist bump each other. I think it's super cool. Um, but again, that's really all that we have to say about this episode. Um, this was a bit of a shorter one. Now we're back on track. Actually, if this goes up when I expect it to, when I'm planning right now, we'll still have one more video, uh, and that'll be up here in a couple days to get us fully back on track with the anime reviews, which should be coming out on Monday morning at 10 a.m. going forward. Again, if you watch this episode, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Maybe I'm just overcritical, and I just thought it was... You know, they kept saying Lusamine was acting like a child and like, yeah, that that's exactly it. Was acting like a child and it was freaking annoying. But maybe that was just me. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, make sure you hit the like button. And if you want to become a member of the domination of the Pokemon community, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. We'll see you for the next Pokemon anime review. Until then, have a blessed day.